Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about the magic data model and data uploading. There's a Google Doc link here, and uh, the website can be found at earthref.org slash magic, or if you Google PMAG database, that uh, puts, uh, we're the top link there still, uh, and uh, you can see the data model at these two links, which are also um, on that uh, Google Doc page. Here's the magic homepage. Uh, we've got uh, a sort of a modern layout with uh, two, three large buttons at the top where you can go to the search interface, uh, go to the upload tool and go to your private workspace. And then we have some icons that link to various magic resources. Um, when you're uploading your data, uh, there's the data model uh, lists of the method codes and uh, vocabulary lists are quite useful. Um, we also display the most recent uploads uh, on this page, the home page. So the magic data model is uh, set up in a hierarchical system where uh, at the base are your measurements uh, uh, on each individual specimen. And then those are grouped into specimens. So you have a group of measurements that are uh, done on a specimen. Uh, then those can be grouped uh, into samples. So uh, samples could have a multiple of specimens taken out of them, like uh, for a core for paleomagnetism in a lava. Uh, you might have three or four specimens uh, grouped into a sample. And then uh, sites, which could be a group of samples. And in the magic vocabulary, a site is a place where you would expect the properties measured there to be the same and able to be average. So lava flow, you would expect all the magnetic directions to be the same. So you would call that a site. Uh, uh, a, a horizon in a sedimentary section could be a site. Uh, in a, a core, uh, every single horizon is a separate site. So in cores, you end up with your specimen, sample, and sites are one-to-one. -one naming scheme. And you can use the same name uh, for specimen samples and sites uh, if you want to. And locations is a, a very uh, generic way of describing a grouping of sites. Uh, people have lots of different ways of doing that. Um, we have uh, uh, regions, outcrops, drill holes, archaeological site, and so on. Archaeologists call uh, what they call sites is what we call locations. Um, and then uh, finally on the top level is the contribution level where uh, that's the journal and uh, descriptions of uh, the whole data contribution. And uh, when you're at the data model, you can uh, drill down to uh, lower levels to get more information of to the table. So here, this is a drill down in the sites table, and we have grouped them together uh, into subsets. So there's a, a result group and the site group here. Uh, each of these rows is a column name. So you have uh, the IGSN, uh, the column name in the site table is called IGSN. Uh, there's a description here. Uh, the data type, and then uh, how it's validated. So in this case, it's just this, uh, this field is validated to see if it uh, meets the validation type of IGSN. Um, results types, uh, this means that there's a restricted vocabulary. So vocabulary means that there's a controlled vocabulary that uh, result type has to be. Uh, requality, uh, this recommended means that we really highly recommend you filling in this column, but it's not required to uh, be filled out for uploading. Um, 
It will allow you to activate and publish your data without these recommended fields, but uh, we highly encourage them. And then method code, uh, on this uh, method codes here, this is required in the sites table. It means we won't allow you to activate or publish a data set without uh, the required field. And then you can drill down further uh, and get some more descriptions of a, a column header. So here are some examples of the column header. Uh, here are the, the explanations of the validations, uh, a link uh, to a controlled vocabulary if it has one, and sort of the history of the evolution of that, that data column through the various data models that we've had. So we also have a data model Google Sheet, and this is our uh, uh, source uh, data for creating our data model, but it's also maybe a way that some people would like to look at the data model. So if you like looking at, uh, I'll just bring this over as a live sheet here. If you like looking at things in tables instead of in GUIs, uh, that's a way to do that. So. Here, uh, all of the uh, web display information is just set up in columns here, uh, where the table is here, uh, the various groups, the column name, and so on. And this could be useful if you want to search uh, the whole data model for uh, a certain name or number. You can also search in the GUI itself. So now I'm going to go through uploading uh, a data file. So this is sort of a general workflow for, uh, this is for generally legacy data sets. So what we would hope people would do going forward is that you would set up your lab to uh, take the measurement level data that comes out of your instruments and as you process it through your workflow, you uh, create magic data file format files uh, that come out at the end of your workflow so that you can just easily upload them. All of your method codes and various descriptions and columns could be automatically created. Uh, that's what has been done at the Berkeley lab and the I, uh, SIO lab so that uh, most of this stuff is just automatically collected and stored and you don't have to uh, fill out uh, this stuff manually every time. But if you're going back and trying to fill out uh, legacy data sets or uh, you want to enter in other people's data that's just published in the literature, uh, this is a, a way to go and a way to get into understanding the data model um, without going into the measurement level to start with. So the uh, process here is uh, we'll take a, I'm going to take an Excel file from a published paper, uh, group it into uh, the various tables, uh, then uh, go to the magic web page, uh, upload the data uh, into our upload GUI, uh, format the table columns, and then uh, get that all working and uh, upload into my private workspace. Uh, and then run the validation tool and uh, then would be ready to be made public. So that's it for this part. Close that. So I'm going to uh, up, uh, upload the data from this paper. Uh, it's an archeological study, uh, SNEP 2020. So I downloaded the supplemental material from this paper and I'll up it, open it up in Excel. So here we have the uh, data table that's included and it's all in one single table 
and has a lot of columns. And so what we're going to do, there's only site level information here, so no measurement level data or samples or specimens. So we're just going to fill out the location table and the site level table for us to upload. Um, I've created a Excel template that uh, helps people with understanding which data fields are required and makes it a little bit easier to move data into an Excel sheet. Uh, that's also a way of uh, quickly seeing which uh, fields are required and which ones are, are not. So uh, for this demo, I'm going to delete a lot of these uh, sites because that will just take a little bit too much time that we don't have. But um, I'll just do two, loc two, two locations here for this demo. So uh, now let me open up the template, which is uh, linked on the help page on the Magic Works uh, website and also is uh, in the Google Doc that I linked to. So in this template uh, Excel workbook, uh, all of the tables in Magic are down here at the bottom. So we have uh, these hierarchical ones, and then we also have a, a few uh, extra ones that, that can be used, criteria, ages, and images. I won't talk about those today. Um, let me delete these. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this uh, template worksheet, um, I'm going to fill out the locations table. So here uh, is the column header names in our uh, computer uh, database name. Uh, these little links go to the controlled vocabulary for each of these columns and I've set it up to where if it's in bold it's something that it's a column that's required and if it's not then it's just ones that are useful or usually we fill out. Um, so for locations you need a location name and in this uh, papers data file what that would be is the site name. So they have three of these uh, what they call sequence numbers. These sequence numbers are going to be the site names. So for now, we're just dealing with locations. So I'm gonna copy over the location names. Okay, next location type. So um, this is gonna be an archeological is the location type. If you want to see the list of them, you can click on this. And it goes to the magic website and shows the list of the sites or the location types. So I can just copy that. There. Geologic classes, so this is a, like the material type. So for us in this study, they're archeological, archeologic. Uh, for other types of geological materials, you can have igneous, uh, submarine. People can use this when they're searching for data. So it's very important to have these filled out and that's why they're required. Um, people want to be able to say, give me all igneous 
of a certain declination and inclination and have that uh, be returned to them. So we require this to be filled out and uh, so go back to the lithologies. So there's uh, hundreds of lithologies uh, for archaeological, uh, these archaeological samples, we use baked earths is the one that seems most reasonable. Okay, at the location level, people, uh, at the location level, we have a bounding box. So that's the area where all of the sites land. Um, so, uh, here uh, in the Hemmerberg location, uh, they're all uh, at the same latitude and longitude. Um, they could, we could have much more specific site level positioning and that would be great. And then we would uh, have a bounding box. But in this case, it's, they're both going, the north and south and east and west are going to be the same values. So. Fill those out here. Oops. Next, uh, we want to have, uh, we require an age for each location. And the age uh, has to be either a high and a low filled out of for a location or the age. Um, you can also have age and high and low, if that makes sense. Age sigma can be given if you have an age. So uh, if you look at the explanation, uh, T1 is the low age, T2 is the high age. TM is the middle age, and TR is the um, 99 percentile age for carbon-14. Um, so um, high and low for the first location is going to be from 200 to 600. Then high and low for the second, well, and so the age for this one we wouldn't fill in because it's variable, uh, but for this one we have a single age. And then for age sigma, Um, this is described as 99%, which is 2.58 sigma about. So we should convert that. To one sigma. So that's about 29.5. All right, so we're almost done. Uh, age unit. So these are in years calibrated before present. And the variety of units. Here, um, standard ones we we'll use. Citation. So here, um, uh, you would put the DOIs of these studies um, that are part of the data of this row. So here they've given an older 
reference for part of this location. Um, and they also have ones that are from this study itself here labeled new. So we will put the uh, DOI of this study and since it's been revised, we'll also uh, put the DOI of the new study. Uh, and then we will also put the DOI of this study down here. So let me have those already here in a different one. Just a second. So there's that, the DOI, and then a colon between the two. So anytime you have a, a series of entries, a list in MAGIC database, put a colon between them. On DOI, sometimes they contain a colon, and then you should put uh, the citation DOI inside quotes, double quotes. And then these aren't required here. These are continent ocean. So these are in Europe. So I'll fill this one out. Okay. So this uh, location table is now completed. I'll move on to the sites table. So here, where, uh, whoops. So for the sites table, I'm gonna show you a, a feature of the magic upload system where we are going to take this table, which has uh, most of the site information and use it in its original format uh, to upload to the database. So I'm just going to copy all of these rows. And put them over here. So now we still have to have these things in bold, um, but many of them are already exist here. And we can mark the columns when we upload it to the MAGIC website. So uh, we have the site name, and this is gonna be the site name. This is gonna be the location name. We need to create method codes. Now method codes are used in the, uh, used by MAGIC. Uh, for people to describe their data in more detail uh, without having uh, a large number of extra columns that aren't used most of the time. So some uh, here will have some table, uh, row, table columns that uh, will be describing the data that we can use method codes for, and uh, I'll fill that out here now. So. I'll add it in the middle so we can see it going back and forth. So if you use the official magic uh, name for a column, it will automatically detect it and you'll see this later when I upload it. Um, so uh, I'm calling this method code. So the first thing I'm going to add into the method codes are uh, dating uh, type. So there's two archeological ages. There's one carbon 14 age um, from with mass spectrometer AMS. 
and one uh, just regular calibrated carbon 14 age. So if I go to the website, So from here on the website, you can go to method codes. And here we have geochronology method. And uh, search, say C14. We actually want archaeology to start. So archaeology dating is GMCC correlation archaeology. So start with that. And carbon 14. Um, we have so both of these are going to be calibrated ages. And then the final one is uh, also AMS. So just like uh, this is a list of method codes, we put the colon in between. So, uh, next we're going to add the um, type of DMAG that was done. So if we look over here, uh, if you look here, there was AF done and thermal done. So we'll set that up. So that's uh, lab treatment. G lab treatment AF in a zero field uh, is LTAFZ. Then lab treatment AF in a thermal field is ALT. TZ, so we'll put those in. If anybody uh, you know wants to break in with a question, um, that that's okay. Uh, we're going along here. Um, next, um, let's fill that out for the rest of them. So they all have these two methods. All right, and then one more thing we can add on to is uh, the method codes is the sampling methods. So the first one has uh, drill cores, soft cores, and hand samples. So we have a field sampling group. And for soft cores, um, I think the best one is FSC push. Um, also have FSFD for field drilling and FSH for hand sampling. So for this first one, we have all three. Uh, 
All right. Um, for the second one, we just have soft bores and hand samples. So we'll get out of the delete the field drilling. The next one we have just soft sampling. This takes a little bit of time, but it's really important for people that want to be able to search and uh, find things effectively. Okay, so now I think we're done with method codes. Um, let's look back to our next requirements, geologic classes. So um, copy this, um, get this from the locations. So I'll just from there, add it to the end. Geologic types. That's a material type. So here we have um, it's not quite right. geologic types here. So these are uh, this is a list of um, various material sample material types, uh, which is nice to have. So. Here uh, for archaeology, they have, um, let me zoom this down. Screen's a little small, it's good if you can have a large screen with a side screen, uh, but for this demo, working with just uh, a small screen so everybody can see. Um, so here it says structures, and that's what we're going to use for the geologic types. So let's just change this. So we do have hypo cost already. Now we don't have fireplace in this list, but I believe that a hearth should be the same. Um, and if you need to have anything added to controlled vocabulary, uh, give us a email and it doesn't take very long. We should be able to get it done. Uh, if we're not uh, too busy, it takes around five minutes to change and a half an hour to update the website and everything. So we can do those quickly. So for charcoal pit, I uh, wasn't sure what to do with that exactly. So I was gonna ch use charcoal pile. Okay, now I'm going back and checking here. Lithologies, so we should have. And we should fill out the rest.
Okay, lat long, those we have here. Age, we have in the age columns. Age unit, we don't have, so we should add in age unit. So I'll insert it here. Age unit. And citations. So the final one that we have to have is citations. So first one we have published and revised. So we're going to have the, the old DOI for the Schnepp and Lanos 2006. And then this study for the uh, current one. This study here. Use this study because when many times you don't know what the DOI is going to be until later. So of your study. And you won't have to change it uh, uh, when you activate it. Uh, our system will put in the correct DOI uh, for this study. And then for the last one. Okay. Uh, and since it's revised, we put a, this study also if something is going to change. So hopefully uh, now we have a Excel spreadsheet uh, for that paper ready to upload. So I'm going to save as Okay, now go to the website. I'm already logged in here. Um, if not, there's a, there'll be a login up here. You can use your ORCID ID or your old Earthref uh, ID and password. So we're gonna use the upload tool. You can drag and drop or just select it, drag and drop. So here it'll automatically uh, uh, figure out which tables uh, uh, by the names in the Excel uh, notebook. You can also use the same interface with uh, common separated values and tab separated values and magic uh, file formatted files. So um, another way uh, if you're dealing with legacy data sets and it's probably might be a, a more practical way of going about it if there's a lot of them is to write a Python notebook or a Python script that uh, takes uh, the data sets and converts them over into um, tab delimited uh, file, uh, file format. Um, but this is uh, one way of, of, of doing it and uh, you can save uh, the filters here, I'll show you now. That makes, uh, if you have a consistent Excel archive, uh, it's quick to upload. So uh, this, uh, this is the uh, locations table. There are no errors on the locations table. Uh, we have all the headers correct. Uh, this part just checks the column names. So it doesn't validate the data. It just checks to make sure that you have uh, in the table that you are uploading, all the column names are correct. Um, so our second one is not, doesn't have uh, all the column names set up because uh, we're going to use this GUI interface to select them. So here are all the errors. There's a lot of errors to start with. 
but I'm going to fix them all with this uh, column header selector. So this is, uh, so here we can see um, this uh, line we don't want. So we have two header rows. And this is a site, site name. Either select it or start typing in. So if you start typing in, so gives you uh, suggestions. Now this one is still red because this one automatically chose site and there's two with the same name. But now if I change this to location, this one no longer has a problem. A structure name, so do an alternative site name. So that's what I'll use for this one. And B is the number of directions or number of samples. So for this is uh, dir n samples. Dir n total samples is uh, how many you took and this is how many you use. So um, this is what we used here. And then you can turn off columns by using this button here. Remarks. So every table has a uh, every table has a description column, and that's just a text field that you can fill out and describe your data in ways that you can't otherwise in the Magic Data Model. Eight row. Age high, age, age sigma. And method codes was automatically found dating. You could have deleted these in the Excel spreadsheet before you uploaded it, but you can turn them off here. And these might be able to be put into method codes. Um, it's information. For now I'm just turning them off. Patients. So now we've completely selected all of our column headers. It says the file has valid column headers. And what's nice now is that we can save all of this that we've done, all this selecting and choosing and labeling um, by creating a new template. So So you can create a, uh, a template for each table and an upload. And so next time when you come back, you can just upload it and uh, select the template and it will uh, choose everything uh, automatically. And I can show that later if we have time. But for now, I'm going to do an upload. If you have an old upload, you can, like here I was demoing it before, but for now I'm gonna make a new one.
So this is an old one I was trying out earlier. I'll just delete that. So this is the private workspace contribution for that data. Right now the map is getting calculated and this information is being uh, uh, determined. So now it's popped up. Um, so at this point your data is in. If you're to, we, in the past we had troubles with uh, references being duplicated. So now we have implemented uh, requiring people to put the DOI in before you can activate uh, the data. Also, this gets all of the reference information, the bibliographical information correct. So I'll show you how that works. If you take the paper DOI, put it in here, and then click Save. Now the uh, journal information has been acquired. Next, uh, we're going to uh, validate all of the data in the various tables. So if I did a perfect job, it'll pass. But if I've made some mistakes, then uh, we'll see some errors. So let's see, we have a few errors in the sites table. So let's see what this is. Sites table is this class looks okay. So I forgot to add the geologic classes. Oh, here it is. It turned it off. Try that again. Um, next error. All right, this one zero deck value minus. 1.7 is less than zero. So we have to, not sure what those other errors are. We'll get back to those later. Um, so we, uh, we require declination between zero and 360. Um, so this should be uh, 358.3. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Lithiology, so I can be more specific. Let's see. Um, yeah, you can. Um, let's see. Uh, not quite sure why these other columns aren't showing up, but let's. Oh, let's uh, let's delete this. To delete this one, there we go. That's probably the problem. All right. Um, okay. We'll save that. Back to the 
tre. Try that again, I'm not sure quite what happened there. So this has two better rows. Yeah, good point since this morning. Okay, uh, let me try not uh, doing that. might not work as we've had some bugs with this reason. Okay, well, we will work on that uh, template upload. Um, but uh, for, no, for now, that's, uh, that's the demo. And answer questions, if you like. Feel free to unmute also if you want. Thanks, Nick. I, I'm going to leave now, but all of, you're going to upload a copy, a rec recording of this Zoom session? Uh, yes. Uh, we'll put it on the, we have a magic uh, YouTube channel, and uh, you can link, it'll be linked to from the help page at the, at the magic website. Great. Okay. Thanks a lot. See you sure. later. I'll stop recording now. Hi. Yeah. Hi everyone. This is Nick. Swan.